back in 10 seconds. Put on your headphones, Al. Okay, welcome back to the Futures. We're talking to Amara Angelica, and uh, Mrs. Future has a question for Amara. Yes, yes. Well, I know that, Amara, that you have worked quite extensively over the years with a futurist, Ray Kurzweil, and uh, that you and he have certainly written books about the breakthroughs and the things that are coming. Uh, maybe you want to contextualize this brain cloud research in that context. Like the singularity? Yeah. Yeah, what, what is the singularity? Well, that's an interesting question. I don't think anyone actually knows. But <laughs> isn't it when everything happens at once? Maybe yes. At some point in the future, it's always a little bit in the future. Yeah. It's the idea that at some point in the near future, artificial intelligence will become essentially infinite, and it will become still. It will become an entity of its own. An independent will and an identity, a singular identity. Yes. Yeah, well, yes, uh, the singularity actually comes from the black hole concept where it's a, a point where everything collapses into the black hole as a singularity. So it's in a cataclysmic, in a way, concept. And why it's classic cataclysmic is well, we won't be part of it. Why not? If it's a singularity, we're all part of it, aren't we? I mean, unfortunately, no. No, if something <laughs> goes away in the singularity, the so it's, not, it's not the same as the oneness then. <laughs> Oh, okay. A little bit different because yeah. the, the concern is that superintelligence mm. will be so far beyond us. We'll, we'll be like, as Elon Musk likes to say, house cats for, this, for, for AI. House cats for lucky. If we're lucky, <laughs> yes. And if we play our cards right. right. So, you think that's possible? I mean, you're in your in depth understanding that this AIs could be that intelligent and separate from us. This is all speculation. So yeah, no, I'm, I'm curious what you but, think. You know, but, years. so I can't. In, in other words, we don't really know. It's just who really knows, basically, well, right? I don't know, really know. Maybe yeah, someone okay, else well, does. Okay, well, you don't. <laughs> we're in tr well, you we don't know. That. <laughs> I would say you're definitely one of the persons on the edge of how dangerous AIs could be. Well, it's the most controversial subject right now in the world, in, in certain worlds. Mm. Mm. And <clears throat> the real question is, what can we do about it? Now, Elon Musk has an incredible idea, which is very exciting. It's mm -hmm. also very frightening. Mm. And that is, why not use that same method of detecting people's brainwaves and um, take it a step further and put uh, electrodes all through the brain and then feed that signal out so that we can communicate with super intelligence whatever that is why would it be super intelligence at that point well that's that's the ai entities you know kind of a big oh, i see way. so it's a way of combining human intelligence with ai intelligence and being able to communicate with ai intelligence. yeah so having a high bandwidth connectivity with ai exactly exactly um <clears throat> okay that makes sense because you want to as high bandwidth as possible that will create more and more of a symbiotic relationship, possibly. Right. <clears throat> and so what Musk has come along with is a, a, a much better way of designing electrodes so that they're soft, they go into the neuron area very well. Mm. And they're put in by robots, so it's highly precise. So they feel they can put in like thousands of these things so that it'll be detecting maybe 10, 000, tens of thousands of neurons. Yes, yes, and, and not disrupting the vascularization of the brain. You know, it, it, what I saw in the pictures of the video you sent me was that the robots are so precise that they avoid breaking blood vessels when yes. they insert the electrodes. Right, and the electrodes themselves are about the size of blood vessels, so that they're that small. Which is yeah. a fraction of the size of a hair. Yes, exactly, and the area of a few microns. So, so that would connect us up better with the, with the AIs. Well, and it, they wouldn't just take over at that point. We would have be on an equal turf with them. Well, maybe. 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 Well, maybe we just need one really smart people to do this and get thousands of electrodes in their brain. Well, and 
and see what, oh, how about the mini brains? They're growing mini brains now. They could grow a mini brain with uh, these electrodes already in from, from the beginning. That's an interesting idea. <laughs> yeah, Very that way dangerous. you don't have to hurt anybody, you know? It's a, you're, you're brought up as being that's already a hybrid. Well, maybe one of our listeners will oh. will know what to do. Okay. I'm not sure it will Okay, well, <laughs> then we can only speculate at this point. So, uh, can we give us some movie references to some of this? Uh, oh, yeah. For those people who maybe have aware of sci-fi. So, basically, I, th I see this as uh, The Matrix. Okay. And if you remember, The Matrix was the idea of connecting human brains to a imaginary world. And, and the idea was to distract people who are... Turns out that you're living in their pods and didn't know the outs outside world exists. Mm. And while they're using their bodies as an energy source. Mm. They're being drained by a larger uh, intelligence. Exactly. And uh, meanwhile, they're entertained in their own little uh, worlds. Right. So really yeah. Culp K. Dix kind of thinking, yeah. yeah. So this is what led me to the idea that um, Elon Musk is the architect. Because he thinks that way? Uh, I think he what he's, what he's doing is what an architect should be doing, which is, that's a character from The Matrix hmm. that was kind of controlling the whole world and designing it. Well, that would, well, if he's, but, but The Matrix had that evil kind of thing of using the energy, not to the benefit of the entire system, but to, to whoever they use the energy for. It's not us. You know what? I mean, what, uh, you know, what's the... Well, the big theme in the Matrix was to prevent the uh, humans from waking up. So right? that they saw, because it wasn't, what if they could wake up into a movie that was really, really pretty good? I mean, what would that look like? I don't know, but um, it raises interesting questions about who's controlling the Who? whole scene. Yeah. Well, I'm thinking that if it's all one, then there's really no other. That you know, if that's true, you know, if it's really, if there is, a, if, the, if there's a unity in universe, uh, at some point, then it's all connected in some weird or bizarre way or another. There's really no aliens. There's really no other. It's all uh, just a strange aspect of ourselves in that in that model of understanding. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a huge conversation going on through all of history about what is consciousness and uh, people such as Deepak Chopra right now are saying things like uh, matter isn't, in, isn't conscious, in fact consciousness contains matter. And what we're yeah, talking like about information here before biology, before matter, is a system where we use technology to uh, plug uh, new fibers into our neural net, our biological uh, consciousness system. And then with those fibers, we do things that we have learned to do mechanically, such as communicate with the vast information network of the internet. And it's to me, it sounds like we've always imagined uh, superpowers like omnipotence and telepathy and uh, simulation of our reality being inside of something that's much larger that we're not perceiving. And so this is the, the, the model that we're talking about. We're talking about a physical mechanism to take a functioning human brain and then marry it to the thinking modalities of a mechanical information system such as the internet. Mm -hmm. We're going to uh, merge the two in a way um, mm -hmm. from, what, from what I can see with this. Now, <laughs> I don't think everyone's going to go for that, but if it, you can do it without invasive technology like electrodes, maybe if you can just wear a baseball cap or something and be able to get into this, this kind of uh, connectivity, then I think it could become more of a mainstream thing. But, well, DARPA is working on mm -hmm. a solution, some various solutions for that purpose. Uh -huh. Oh, Believe like a baseball not. cap that'll make you smarter? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wear this cap. <laughs> yeah, you thought your phone was something. <laughs> well, <clears throat> what, they've, what they're developing is um, a way to not have to put electrodes into the brain. 
Really? So non-invasive yes. connectivity to your brain. Now, that's more like it. I, I like I, yeah. something about embedding is, is still kind of, you know, it's going to yeah. be the uncanny valley for humans. Oh, hey, Frankenstein. Many, yeah. Yeah. How many people would want to have the Not many, work? many. That's why yeah. you'd have to grow the mini brains. You know? yeah. <laughs> but anyway, that's another it's trajectory. Idea of making a note on that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's you know, what do I say? Uh, so uh, how far um, has, uh, you know, has the Neuralink folks gotten with this right now? What's the, what's the state of the art of, of um, the Neuralink project? Well, they've developed very capable um, electrodes that can be implanted. And <clears throat> they're planning to actually implant them by the end of next year into paraplegics to replace the uh, the ones the systems they have now so that should be fantastic mm-hmm. Until paraplegic right this year right? Mm-hmm. coming up wow well, mm-hmm. good yeah they're working with some people from UCSF and and uh, Stanford and you know this is real uh, high-end mainstream research going on in this area yeah, it's pretty impressive really yeah Yes, we uh, thanks to you, we, we watched quite a bit of the um, the Academy of Sciences live stream of the uh, neuro of the Elon Musk is it neural, called Neuralink the Neuralink presentation and each of the various research experts presenting their part of the project and what they showed us is how many different kinds of technology they're trying to weave together for this mm-hmm. one of them is this as you were saying this this laser driven precision filament implanting system so that mm-hmm. they can have um, a, a, a physical net of fibers that then they can attach to neural neural I'm, nodes I'm just- and to computer nodes. Yeah, I'm just thinking of the possibilities here. I'm thinking of initially, you know, what do our scientists do? They mostly work with rats, right? Rats, mice, cats, dogs. Monkeys. Monkeys, yeah. monkeys, all these critters will be the first one to have super intelligence when <laughs> we connect That's them in. And they might take that AI super intelligence. The AI might do something uh, with that power of connecting That's with canines. Really interesting. And, one of our yeah. authors, uh, Dr. Lebedev, uh-huh. actually developed a system where monkeys could think... A, a watch uh, a robot yeah. and control the robot with their thoughts. Yeah, a monkey controlling a robot. With, yeah. With no connection, just like bam. And did it adapt to quickly to it? Did the monkey seem to like controlling the robot? I don't know if there's a comedy line in there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, working on our stand up here. Okay. <laughs> what did the monkey say to his robot AI? Enough monkey business. <laughs> we'll be back after the break with Amara Angelica. We're talking about the brain computer interface.